Welcome back to Water Quality Monitoring with South Sound Green and the Nisqually River Education Project. In the last episode, Sam taught you all about the various water quality parameters that you may be testing for. Now we'll talk about how different factors influence water quality parameters and what we can do to improve water quality. Many different environmental conditions can have effects on our local rivers. Even when you are not directly next to a river, pollution anywhere in a watershed could have an effect on water quality. We categorize water pollution into two main categories, point and non-point source pollution. Point source pollution is any type of pollution coming from a single source. Point source pollution, like oil spills, is extremely harmful. This type of pollution is often identified and managed by environmental organizations. Non-point source pollution can be much harder to manage since it is often coming from many different people or causes. The photo on this slide shows the polluted water flowing out to the ocean, but all those houses are responsible for contributing to that pollution. Often without knowing, everybody contributes to non-point source pollution, which makes it very difficult to control since there is not one single person to call to put a stop to it. There are a lot of different surfaces outdoors, some of them natural and some of them human-made. It is important to have porous or pervious surfaces, like forests, gardens, and lawns, that allow rainwater to be absorbed into the ground and filtered before it returns to the nearest body of water. Impervious surfaces, like roads, concrete, or buildings, don't allow water to pass through, so instead the water runs off the surface into the lakes and rivers, carrying all the pollution from the surface with it. These two pictures show the conversion of the Puget Sound area from pervious surfaces, shown in green, to impervious surfaces in black. This means that all the rain falling on the black areas of the maps runs off the surface instead of being purified underground. The difference in time between these two images is 24 years, and it's been about 24 years since the most recent picture, so take a moment to think about how today's picture might look. Do you think there would be more or less green in the picture? Let's talk about some different environmental scenarios that might affect water quality. Imagine you're at a fast moving river with rapids. How might these rapids affect water quality? The color of the water looks white from all the bubbles that are being created, and when there's bubbles, we know that there tends to be more dissolved oxygen. We can't see all the way down to the riverbed, but what's probably happening down there? Fast moving water is likely stirring up a lot of sediments, and when all that sediment gets into the water, is going to increase the turbidity and total suspended solids. Remember, salmon like a lot of oxygen, but don't like water with a lot of turbidity. How do you think a salmon would feel living here? How do you think using a lot of fertilizer on lawns, gardens, or farmer's fields affects the nearby rivers? Fertilizers use nitrates to feed plants, but if too much is applied and the plants don't use it all, the excess nitrates will wash into the rivers. The nitrates in the river will feed algae, causing dissolved oxygen to decrease due to the increase in bacteria feeding off the algae. If you've walked around a river, maybe you've seen some litter laying near or in the river. It may seem harmless, but litter in rivers can have many negative effects on water quality, depending on the type of garbage in the river. Trash can introduce harmful fecal coliform bacteria, especially if the trash contains bags of dog poop. Trash can change the pH of the water to be more acidic or more basic depending on what types of chemicals are in the trash. Batteries, for example, are very acidic and could lower the pH of the water. Soaps, detergents, and bleach are basic and could raise the pH. How might having farm animals or pets near rivers affect water quality? If there is not enough of a buffer between the animals and the river, their waste can get washed directly into the river. Animal waste contains fecal coliform bacteria as well as nitrates. As Sam taught you in the last video, the introduction of nitrates negatively impacts the dissolved oxygen levels via eutrophication. Animal waste in the water also increases turbidity and total suspended solids. Yuck. Do you think pollution from cities is an example of point source or non-point source pollution? If you guess non-point, that is correct. 
Pollution from cities is an example of non-point source pollution since there are many factors in the city contributing to water quality. This includes pet waste, motor oil, gasoline, chemical waste from factories, and even air pollution mixing with the water. Cities cause an increase in turbidity, total solids, temperature, fecal coliform, and nitrates, which in turn may cause a decrease in dissolved oxygen and a change in pH. The riparian zone refers to the area around a river in which the plants are directly affecting and being affected by the river. So how does a healthy riparian zone create a healthy river? Thanks to the trees casting shade over the river, the temperature decreases, which helps to increase dissolved oxygen. The roots from the trees also help to stabilize the riverbank and keep soil out of the water, reducing turbidity and total suspended solids. A healthy riparian zone can act as a buffer between the water and nearby influences, filtering pollutants before they reach the river. Protecting the riparian zone can prevent many of the negative effects from the other scenarios we just talked about. So now that we know how different scenarios affect water quality, what can we do to improve water quality? There are many easy ways to protect the health of our watershed, like picking up your dog's poop, picking up trash and not littering, and not overusing fertilizer in your yards. Another way to reduce pollution is to carpool, bike, or take the bus whenever possible, and to wash your cars on your lawns or at commercial car washes instead of on your driveway. It is also important to educate others on water quality influences so they can make more informed choices. What else do you think you can do to improve water quality? Thank you for watching our videos on water quality monitoring. Now that you know why and how we monitor water quality, you can get out there and do it yourself. With your help, we can keep our water clean for all the creatures that need it. See you out there!